Welcome, race fans, to This Week in Racing for March 30th, and now for the latest. NASCAR made a big announcement this past week, announcing the 2020 schedule for the Monster Energy Cup Series, and it has a whole bunch of changes. The season finale, moving from Homestead, Miami, to ISM Raceway, Phoenix, and Homestead is getting a regular season race. After the Daytona 500, NASCAR heads straight to the West Coast for the West Coast Swing, then heads to Atlanta. Atlanta will be the fifth race of the season that is scheduled for March 15th. Next big change is 4th of July weekend. The 4th of July weekend race is moving from Daytona to Indianapolis. Daytona has hosted the 4th of July race since the doors opened in 1959. Daytona will be hosting the regular season finale on August 29th, still a night race. The first playoff race is moving to Darlington, the Southern 500. Final race in the round of 16 at Bristol. Final race in the round of 12 at Charlotte on the Roval. Final race in the round of 8 at Martinsville. And a big Martinsville announcement. A regular season night race at Martinsville. Yes, a night race at Martinsville scheduled for Mother's Day weekend. And a Father's Day race at Chicagoland. And this one, which a lot of people uh, probably uh, are a little bit shocked about, maybe not, but back-to-back races, back-to-back Cup Series races at Pocono Raceway. Yes, Saturday, June 27th, and Sunday, June 28th. And the last four races of the regular season, Michigan, Watkins Glen, Dover, and Daytona. And the Daytona 500 for next year is scheduled for February 16th. So here it is. The schedule as we know it has been shooken up a little bit. I would say a lot. And uh, we'll have to see how this unfolds in 2020. Uh, but first we got to finish the rest of 2019. For info on the 2020 NASCAR schedule and the actual schedule itself, head over to motorsportsradio.net and click on the 2020 NASCAR schedule button. All right, the qualifying fix in NASCAR. Uh, Everyone knows what happened during qualifying two weeks ago at Auto Club Speedway. Twelve drivers sitting at the exit of Pitt Road running down the clock. Well, NASCAR has laid down the law. Starting this weekend at Texas Motor Speedway, all cars must post a lap time in the final session. Once a car leaves the pit box, it cannot stop on Pitt Road. Any driver that blocks pit road and prohibits other drivers from exiting will incur a penalty. This is according to the Associated Press. Greg Biffle returns. Driver of the famous 16 car will be racing in the Ganda Outdoor Truck Series for just one race at Texas Motor Speedway in June, June 7th. Driving the 51 truck for Kyle Busch Motorsports in the Rattlesnake 400. Joe Gibbs Racing announced that it has renewed its partnership with Interstate Batteries, a multi-year agreement. The partnership between Interstate Batteries and JGR is one of the longest sponsorships in professional sports, which will be 30 years with this contract renewal. Interstate Batteries will be primary sponsor of the 18 car driver Kyle Busch for six races and was sponsor of the 18 car when Kyle Busch recorded his 200th career win two weeks ago at Auto Club Speedway. Interstate Batteries was the founding sponsor of Joe Gibbs Racing, dating back to 1992. That's crazy, man. I think it was in eighth grade in 1992. <laughs> Ooh, that was a long time ago. NASCAR announced some rule changes for uh, Super Speedways uh, this past week. Uh, first, rear spoiler will in- be increased from 8 inches to 9 inches. Second, a one-inch bolt on the track bar mount, uh, will, which will raise the car by one inch from 11 inches to 12 inches. Uh, prior to the start of the 2018 season, NASCAR eliminated minimum height requirements, and race teams started hunkering down the rear of the cars to reduce drag and increase speed, which will now be counteracted with the track bar change. Next Super Speedway race will be Talladega April 28th for the Geico 500. 
Thank you, Rays fans, for tuning in. This is Manny Allegretta for the Motorsports Radio USA podcast, motorsportsradio.net.